The Busted Bell, Season 1, Episode 9. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Season 1, Episode 9 of Revolutionary War Rarities, the podcast from the Sons of the American Revolution. My name is Jim Griffith. And my name is Jim Maples. Jim, we are thrilled again to have Brooks Lyles with us today. As you may remember from our last episode, Brooks is the Historian General of the National Society of Sons of the American Revolution. He is also Commander of the National Color Guard. He's a historian, a patriot, and dedicated to the educational, patriotic, and historic goals of the Sons of the American Revolution. Brooks, we are always happy to have you with us. Thank you for agreeing to join us for another episode. I am honored to be back with you, Jim. And I'm thankful for what you guys are doing with the Revolutionary War Rarities podcast and for the Sons of the American Revolution. Well, there are many things that have been misunderstood in American history. One item that is significantly misunderstood is the Liberty Bell. What role did it play in the founding of this country? What happened to it? Where did it come from? Is there someone famous that is associated with it? What is the deal with the Liberty Bell? Well, Jim, there are lots of questions. Liberty Bell was housed in the steeple bell tower of the Pennsylvania State House in Philadelphia, also known as Independence Hall. Tradition tells us that it told for the first reading of the Declaration of Independence on July the 8th, 1776. However, that particular story is doubted by many due to the disrepair of the steeple at that particular time. The bell had been ordered in 1751 to celebrate the original Constitution of Pennsylvania, also known as the Charter of Privileges. The bell was ordered from Whitechapel Bell Foundry in London. The foundry that had cast the original Liberty Bell closed operations in June of 2017, after 450 years of casting bells. The Liberty Bell was made of 75% copper, 25% tin, had traces of lead, zinc, arsenic, gold, and silver. The bell weighed 2,080 pounds. The yoke or wooden structure that suspends the bell is believed to be the original but that cannot be verified. It weighs in at 100 pounds and is made from American elm wood. And now here's the crazy part. The original Liberty Bell cracked on its first ringing on March the 10th, 1753. John Pass and John Stowe were then given the Liberty Bell to be melted down and recast, which they did. This process involved adding some copper to the mixture in hopes of making the metal less brittle. The new bell was raised on March the 29th, 1753, and rang much to the displeasure of the public. Although it did not crack, the tone of the bell was no longer pleasing to the public. So guess what they did? Pass and Stowe recast the bell yet again and hung it on June of 1753. And yet again, the people were displeased with the sound so a request was made to the Whitechapel Foundry to cast yet another Liberty Bell. Now, when the second Liberty Bell was cast by the Whitechapel Foundry, it was agreed by the public that it sounded no better than the second recast of the original bell, which was done by Pass and Stowe. Now, this is getting confusing, so hang on here. We have, if I understand correctly, we have two bells. One that was the second recasting by Pass and Stowe of the original metals contained in the first casting by Whitechapel Foundry. Is that correct? Jim, that is correct. Okay, then there was a second bell provided by Whitechapel Foundry that proved to be no better than the Pass and Stowe recast of the original bell provided by Whitechapel Foundry. Is that correct? Again, you are correct. Okay, so are there two Liberty Bells? I've got this one. No, the Liberty Bell was the second recasting done by Pass and Stowe. When the second Whitechapel Foundry Bell was received, it sounded no better than the current bell. It was decided not to replace the bell in the tower. The new bell was placed in the cupola of the State House. The one that rang frequently and was heard by the public was in the steeple. And that is the Liberty Bell that can be seen in Philadelphia today. Okay, so let's do some additional trivia here. Are you guys ready? Indeed we are. Okay, so on what occasions was the Liberty Bell rung? It was rung quite often. It was used to call the state assembly together, to summon people together for special announcements or events. 
It was wrong when King George III ascended to the throne in 1761. It was wrong to discuss the Sugar Act of 1764 and again to discuss the Stamp Act of 1765. There are certainly many other times the bell was rung, some of which were mentioned earlier in the podcast. Very good. Question number two. Do you know what note was rung by the Liberty Bell? Jim, that would be E flat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, question number three. Do you know the scripture that is inscribed on the Liberty Bell? Jim, that would be from Leviticus chapter 25, verse 10, Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Correct. And question number four. Are there any misspelled words on the Liberty Bell? It depends on how you look at it. In today's spelling practices, yes, but there has been some evolution on the word that is, quote, misspelled. Pennsylvania today is spelled with two N's in pen. At the beginning, Pennsylvania was spelled with a single N in pen. So the Liberty Bell has Pennsylvania misspelled when compared to today's spelling. However, it was not misspelled at the time the bell was cast. Very good. Question number five. When was the last time that the Liberty Bell was rung? The Philadelphia Public Ledger takes up the story in its February 26, 1846 publication. The old independence bell rang its last clear note on Monday last in honor of the birthday of Washington and now hangs in the great city steeple, irreparably cracked and dumb. It had been cracked before, but was set in order that day by having the edges of the fracture filed so as not to vibrate against each other. It gave out clear notes and loud and appeared to be in excellent condition until noon, when it received a sort of compound fracture in a zigzag direction through one of its sides, which put it completely out of tune and left it a mere wreck of what it was. So what did the bell sound like? Well, according to studies and some pinging of the crack bell, it is believed to have sounded like this. And so it goes. There are many symbols of our country during the time of the American Revolution, including flags, liberty trees, and obviously the Liberty Bell. These were all items that inspired people to fight the necessary fights to secure the liberties that we enjoy today. And although the Liberty Bell had somewhat of a tough life, it absolutely inspired the founding fathers while they were in Philadelphia debating and figuring out what this country would ultimately become. And for that, we are thankful. We, the Sons of the American Revolution, salute the Liberty Bell, Pass and Stowe, and the efforts to save this incredibly important relic, which has symbolized this great nation since its very beginning. Brooks, thank you again for joining us today on Revolutionary War Rarities. I'm Jim Griffith. And I'm Jim Maples. And we thank you for joining us today. And please be sure to join us for the next episode of Revolutionary War Rarities Podcast. This has been a production of the National Society Sons of the American Revolution, www.sar.org.